<laughs> All right, there are so many things for investors to be watching right now. We put together a group of smart money minds to give you a market survival guide. We've got Larry Haverty, who's been keeping an eye on those Disney results. He's a portfolio manager for Gamco. We also have Joel Fishbein. He covers software companies for Lazar Capital Markets. He's going to talk about the Cisco hangover in the technology sector today. And also Platinum Partners President Uri Lonsman talking about commodities. Now, we saw some big gains today, including copper. We know that they touched a record high as well. Ori, good to have you with us. Joel, Larry. Now, let's start with you, uh, Ori, because it seems as though commodity prices have been moving pretty much in step with what the dollar is doing and the dollar moving in step with what the Federal Reserve is doing. Is this all linked somehow? Well, uh, possibly. Uh, when you're talking about commodities, I think you have to look at soft commodities, industrial commodities, and then gold, right? So gold's really been a, a flight to uh, quality. Silver's actually been uh, more exciting than gold, even. It's really, really broken out. I think it's probably about twenty-five dollars a pound, right? I think it's. I think it's a little extended here, but it's been a truly remarkable run. Uh, copper, I think, is as you mentioned, uh, very, very indicative of industrial global production. I think it's really a proxy uh, for global growth. And then the other one I just throw in there is cotton uh, has broken out much like silver has. So it's sort of been a, a, a real commodities uh, explosion here. And is this because there's real demand for all of these? Is it because it's, there's a lot of hot money chasing anything other than the dollar? I believe it's much more likely to the latter than the former. I don't see uh, why people would be so bullish on the demand for any kind of industrial commodity next year. And so the only thing I can think of is, is speculation and dollar selling. Joel Fishbein, when you look at investor appetite for commodities. That's the antithesis of what they were saying about Cisco today. No one liked that report. Yeah, I, I agree with you. No one liked that report, but uh, I, I think they threw the bath, a baby out with the bathwater in this one. Um, Cisco, I think, problems are, are isolated largely to Cisco and a lot of the hardware manufacturers. As you and I have talked about, we're seeing a shift uh, to internet computing, cloud computing, and uh, a lot of the companies that uh, have traditionally been um, good infrastructure providers, uh, the world's moving away from them, and you're going to need less ports, less, soft, uh, less uh, hardware, and you're going to be doing more things in the cloud or over the internet, and uh, I think this was a sign of what's happening with Cisco. This is Taking Stock on Bloomberg. I'm Pim Fox. Now we're giving you a market survival guide with some experts. We have Uri Lonsman of Platinum Partners, Joel Fishbein of Lazard Capital Markets, and we have Larry Haverty, manager for Gamco. All right, Larry, Larry Haverty, can you explain what happened with Disney? The results today coming out unexpectedly early. I thought that Disney's results were going to come out after the closing bell. Well, I think someone hit the wrong button, Pim. That's a, that's a no-no these days. Uh, I was surprised because I was driving over to the studio and uh, I thought my guy was a genius. He got it uh, 10 minutes before uh, I was expecting it. And uh, uh, it, I think it'll prove to be an honest mistake, but uh, there was money made or lost uh, trading on the mistake because the, uh, the reality is the earnings weren't great. And uh, I think the company has some very good businesses and they've got some issues. What are the issues uh, and, that they uh, need to resolve, Larry? Oh, well, I, I think the first issue, uh, and I'm down in St. Petersburg, Tampa right now, is Florida. Uh, the Florida economy is not going to lead us out of, uh, out of the recession, Pim, and a lot of uh, the Disney Park business is local, and I'm, I'm reasonably sure that business is under pressure. And they have some very effective new competition from Universal with, with what I call Harry Potterville. Uh, and then the parks have this issue uh, with uh, labor costs because they're unionized and those costs are going through the roof, especially as interest rates are low and they have to lower their discount assumptions on the pension returns. Uh, so uh, I'm not thinking the parks are going to be too good anytime soon. Uh, and I think that's going to weigh them down. Uh, the second thing, and we talked on the radio about Yahoo, I think uh, after I have uh, Microsoft with the uh, flawed internet strategy, the, uh, the next company with the flawed internet strategy is Disney. And uh, they're losing around $250 million a year, and they should be making hundreds of millions of dollars in this business. And uh, I think what they have to do is really very simple. Uh, I think they have to buy electronic arts. Uh, they dominate uh, sports uh, in, uh, with the ESPN franchise. I think ESPN is the single best media business there is. Uh, and uh, the uh, electronic arts is very cheap. They have $5 a share in net cash, and they have a wonderful mobile business, which gives Disney just what they need on uh, the, uh, along with Playdom uh, in the uh, newer forms of communication. And you get 
this uh, wonderful uh, sports business with Madden and FIFA for practically nothing. It's a no-brainer for them. Now, the, the, the company has these problems, but they have an absolutely great ad business. The numbers are muddled because of the extra week. The extra week's a really big thing. Uh, because uh, it would be the first week in October. That's a big advertising week. You have the World Series. You have people back in school. You have new programs. Uh, and uh, if you took that uh, out, uh, their ad numbers are just terrific. I think they're actually better than a lot of people. Uh, we just had our auto conference in Las Vegas last week, uh, over 30 companies. And I'm, I'm astounded, Pim, at how good a shape the auto industry from top to bottom is in this country. And if the auto industry is in good shape, these guys are going to be advertising. And that's great for the media company. So I could see the stock going down a little bit, but uh, they're, they're buyers the stock around $33. Uh, it's not going below $33, and it's probably uh, uh, pretty attractive if it gets down uh, down to that level. Larry, but if, this if is Bob not Iger something makes there's the, any need to chase. Larry, if Bob Iger makes the deal and buys electronic arts, I mean, you're in for the commission, so don't worry. That's well done, being the investment banker as well as the investor. Well, we're well, not... We're, we're just the investors. All right. I, I understand, but, you know, you never know where he's going to get like, the idea. We like, or, we, we come we in like on the topic, though, of... Of consumers, because when when Larry talks about theme parks, it seems as though the consumer is something that you can't forget about. And the consumer doesn't have a job; they're not going to go spend their money in a well, Disney theme park or any I'm, theme park. I'm yeah, not, it's, an, it's an enormous I'm not issue. Worried, I'm not worried about the consumer, Pim. Uh, last night, the consumer managed to spend 370 million dollars buying um, uh, Call of Duty Black Ops, which is going to do over a billion dollars, which I think would be the second or third biggest film. Uh, the consumer's uh, doing just fine. Stocks like uh, Macy and Kohl's are hitting 52-week highs. Uh, if we could get uh, some uh, better weather uh, in terms of cold, uh, I think the apparel cycle could uh, turn very, very significantly upward. And uh, I, I'm looking for a pretty strong Christmas. Uh, uh, the, 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 uh, push the, push the in on this, Lori yeah. Are you looking yeah. for a good holiday shopping season? Not particularly. Um, I'm not nearly as bullish on the consumer as Larry is. Uh, with unemployment running in the high nines, uh, I don't see this economy recovering strongly at all. I think if you get to your numbers, it's going to be with a lot of discounting. I would be fairly concerned about the consumer. I think there's a lot of proof that the consumer is starting to step back after looking like it was recovering a few months ago. I think probably that since Cisco is seeing a little bit of that in their orders as well. And so uh, I think the consumer is hardly a layup at this point. Well, Joel, I mean, I, I totally, technology totally, seemed to be the area of the market that everybody loved. And now with the Cisco results, it seems as though everyone's running away. Yeah, I think that the market's bifurcated. I would agree with Ori that uh, the, the consumer market is uh, very soft right now, but there are pockets of the enterprise market which are, are, are very strong. And the reason for that is companies are trying to do more with less. And uh, so you're seeing uh, some of the companies really do well. Um, you've seen some of the earnings that come out. Companies are growing 20, 30 percent in, in technology, some of them. Now, Cisco obviously uh, had very poor results last night because pockets of the market aren't growing that fast. So I think it's that have and have not market. So there's parts of the market we really like and parts of the market, as Ori said, that are consumer centric that are, are, are very soft. So what about pockets of the market that you do like? I mean, things like cloud computing, does that mean things like uh, Salesforce.com? Salesforce.com is one we like a lot. Um, uh, we, we like uh, companies like uh, VMware, which we just upgraded this week, which does vir virtualization technology. We like Red Hat, which uh, put out a product uh, announcement yesterday um, that uh, that they increased pricing by roughly 30% uh, on, on some of their higher end products. I mean, you don't raise pricing unless there's demand out there and the, and the demand can sustain price increases. So they have pricing power because people need what they sell. But uh, again, at the lower end of the market where uh, people are selling to the consumer, I think that's been partially stimulated by some of the president's um, uh, funding of, uh, of bailout money. I think in, and that, that's not sustainable, as we all know. All right. I want to thank you, gentlemen, very much. Joel Fishbein coming to us from Lazard Capital Markets, Ori Lonsman from Platinum Partners, and Larry Haverty from Ganco.